sometimes she just gets an energy kick. <laughs> what the heck was that about, Ladybug? Hello, folks. Jason Chrisman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. Well, the goldenrod is about done. Most of it's starting to turn brown, although there is still a few plants and bloom. I've noticed everywhere I look at the goldenrod that it's just, it's about done. It doesn't have its bright yellow look to it anymore. That's probably about the brightest I've seen for a while. Hey, look here. It's getting brown and dangy looking. It's about done. Look here. This little girl got caught out here last night in the rain. You're gonna have to stay there till the sun gets up and dry her off so she can go home. She's soaking. You need a towel, girl. Yesterday I was watching some bees on some uh, aster, which is doing quite well right now, and it will for the next few weeks. The reason for that is, is aster is somewhat frost resistant. So it can handle the first couple frost, but after that it will start to die out. So we've got till, you know, our second frost before we have to worry about there being no resources for our bees. This aster plays a big tool right now because that pollen that those bees are bringing back from the aster plants will be used to raise brood going into the next couple weeks. And that's gonna boost our colonies and give us more winter bees, which is a good thing. Um, hopefully you've done your part and done mite treatments and the mite count is really low right now. And uh, these new bees will just boost the population and the colony will thrive going through winter. Now that said, there is some situations where we've got weaker colonies. Maybe we've lost a queen in a colony. And here we are, middle of October, or going into the second week of October. What should you do? Well, you've got a couple different options. Um, first thing I, I would uh, like to explain to you, it's not the time of year to let the bees raise their own queen. It's just not. You need your queen with your bees to go through winter. Now, I have heard of people taking uh, virgins through winter um, with their bees, and they did fine. But that draws some concerns for me. Um, normally, uh, when a new queen emerges from her cell, within the first couple weeks of her life, she mates. Um, so to take her all the way through winter, month after month of being a virgin, I have to wonder what happens to her ovaries. Does that affect them? that she's not getting mated. So that's a slight concern to me. I don't know all the details of what would happen, but it, it just draws a, f a flag in my head. So it's at this time you either need to order a new mated queen and introduce her to your colony, or maybe the colony's kind of weak and you need to combine it with another colony. And that's what I wanna talk a little bit about today. I'm gonna give you a mock demonstration. We're gonna use a uh, a hive that don't have any bees in it, but we're going to pretend because we're good at that, right? You got a good imagination, and I think we can make this work just on a mock setup on how to combine hives. So let's go over to the mock hive, and I'll show you how to combine two hives into one. Okay, so in this scenario, we're going to take this hive, which we're pretending has bees in it. It's a double 10 frame colony, and then here we have a 10 frame colony, which we're going to pretend is either weak or does not have a queen. Now when I say weak, maybe only four or five frames in that colony actually have enough bees to cover it. The rest are either drawn comb with nothing in them or some food resources. So that there I would consider a weak colony. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine this weaker colony with this stronger colony. It's a real simple procedure the only thing is, only concern you should have is you want to be quick. Because when you open up colonies this time of year, robbing can be a major, major problem. So you want to open them, get them combined, and get out of there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove our top cover, our outer cover. We're going to remove the insulated inner cover and our feeding rim. If you remember, this is the colony that I shared on how to set up your hive to prepare for winter. So now we're down to the 10 frame box. You can see all the frames here on top. 
and we're going to pretend that this whole top is just covered in bees. This hive is just thriving. This one being the weaker colony. For this demonstration, I'm going to use wax paper just simply because I do not have newspaper. But I strongly recommend that you use newspaper if you have it. The reason being is, is this wax paper is not actually wide enough to cover all the frames so I'm going to have to overlap two sheets and that seam between the two sheets could actually be a concern. So when you do this use newspaper or at least a piece of paper that covers the whole top so you don't have to overlap. Alright so what we're going to do is we're going to take two pieces of wax paper that in your case you're going to use newspaper We're going to lay it over top of the frames, like so. We're going to get another piece, cover the rest of it. Like so. So now, in a way, we've got the bees in this box contained because we've kind of put a lid on the top. They can't get up through and they're trapped below the paper. Now we're gonna take our hive tool and we're gonna use the corner of our hive tool to poke a few small holes through the paper. Now, this is pretty key. You wanna make sure that the holes that you make in the paper aren't big enough for bees to fit through. So there, I've made a few holes in the paper. Now the smells from the bottom colony can get up through the newspaper, or the wax paper in my case. Now we're gonna take this whole box, and I don't even have to open it, because I already know it's weak. I already know that it's without a queen, maybe. Um, if it does have a queen, or this colony is queen right, you would want to go through, isolate the queen, and pull her out of the scenario. And I know that's not real easy for a lot of you, You've put all this work into these bees all year long, and that queen has been what's kept the colony gone, but they never really grew much. So you have to take that in consideration when you pull the queen out and you smash her. Sorry to say it, but that's what you're gonna have to do. You wanna use the good queen, the one that's built up all of this colony, as your resource for this colony. So if this has a queen in it, make sure you get her out. If you're not sure if it's queen right, then take the time to go through it frame by frame, make sure there's no queen, make sure there's no larva or any eggs. If that's the case, then all you have to do is lift this box up, set it on top of here, and you're done. Just like so. Now it takes about four to five days for these bees and these bees to chew through the paper and be able to mingle with each other. Now, the first couple days um, of this combined, the top bees and the bottom bees, they don't see eye to eye. The ones, they're thinking, when we get through this paper, you're dead. I'm gonna kick your butt. But on day four, when they actually get through the paper, their whole mindset's changed. They're like, hey, sister, give me a hug. So the whole thing's changed. Now they're one colony, everything is fine. But if you rush the process and make holes too big in your paper, they're gonna get together sooner than they need to be, and you're gonna see some nasty fighting. So that's the reason I say don't put too, holes too big. If you want to, use a needle or a, a, something small just to poke round holes. That way you're sure bees can't fit through them. Now after about five to six days, I would go in, make inspections um, in this top box, try and get to where you can see down from the top, down to your paper, and see if you can see any holes where the bees are mingling back and forth. Once you see that hole and know that the bees are mingling back and forth, then it's safe to remove this top box, pull the paper out, and start flushing all the bees down 
into these bottom two boxes. And the reason I say that is you don't have enough resources up here to be beneficial to this colony. You've actually got more empty resources than you really need on a hive. So if you can, try and push everybody down after over a few days and get rid of this top box and bring the lid back down to here. Now, if that's not an option, you may have to leave this box if all the bees won't fit. But try to do what you can to get them confined down into these top bottom boxes. So I'm gonna link up here in the corner, um, a friend of mine, Brian, Castle Hives, just did a video on combining colonies. And he explains his situation and why he's combining. And he did a really good job showing how to do it. And he even used newspaper, unlike me. So check out his video, I'm gonna link it up here in the corner. Um, go over and check it out. Uh, if you have any questions um, about how to combine a hive, you can leave them here or you can leave them over on Castle Hives and I'm sure Brian will do his best to answer any questions that you have. So I just wanted to give a basic rundown on how this all works. Now, it's not always common that you have a weak colony next to a strong colony that you're gonna combine with. One might be here and one might be clear down in the bottom back row because you're gonna take a colony that's clear down there and combine it with a colony up here. When you remove the box that's way down there, there's gonna be a lot of confusion. So that gets a little tricky. And personally, I would suggest to find a, a place three, four miles away that you can keep bees for a week. I know it's a lot of hassle, but it's gonna save a lot of confusion for the bees. Take both of those colonies, take the stronger one and the weaker one, to the property three four miles away okay put them side by side let them sit there for a couple days after a couple days then combine them all into one box there won't be any confusion as to where am i supposed to go when i come home my home has been taken it's not there anymore um, and they'll know where to go they'll go into their box and they'll work through the newspaper they'll become one colony um, after a week you bring the colony back to your house, back to your bee yard, and you set it up where you want for winter. So it can be a little bit hectic if you've got colonies that are spaced far apart that you want to combine. Um, personally, I wouldn't take one from the far end of the bee yard and combine with this one unless I was moving four miles away for a week and then bringing them back just because of the confusion it can cause. So that's my two cents on how to combine hives. Um, one other tip I'll give you is this, these bottom two deeps, their entrance is facing that way. I think what I would do um, for this top box is I would give them an upper ventilation, uh, an upper entrance of some sort right here so that they can get out and come this way. So that way there's no confusion as to which entrance to go in as, as where there would be if, if the bottom hive entrance was here and the top hive entrance was here on the same side so you can see how putting one one direction and the other other direction would save a lot of confusion so i hope this is helpful um, if you have any questions at all on this procedure or anything i've mentioned please leave them down below and i'll do my best to answer them for you folks um, bee season's almost over folks so take the time enjoy it with your bees and uh, enjoy this fall weather it's beautiful out here it's cooling down. You do have to be quick though when you're doing this kind of stuff because robbing can be a major problem. So don't procrastinate. Get her done, folks. Thanks for watching JC's Bees. If you like this video, throw me a big old thumbs up. All right, Ladybug? Ladybug's sleeping. She don't know. Thanks, folks. See you next week. Need to teach this dog about safety. Look at her. All frog legged here in the driveway. I'd think. What if some crazy Amazon driver comes flying in the driveway, ladybug? What are you gonna do? All frog leg and comfortable? That's what I think too. You better just step off the side of the driveway, honey. Good thinking.